All right, we good? We in focus? This is about the sixth intro that I've done, you guys, because it's late in the afternoon and my camera keeps overheating, so we're just gonna get right to the point. What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so, so much for being here. It's been a real hot minute since I have done a specific, dedicated first impression review, kind of my thoughts in general overall on one specific makeup product. Um, you guys know I've been really into my girl boss videos lately and my fitness content and vlogs and like so many other things, um, but I have been looking through the video requests and comments from you guys, and as you know, I Want to put out what you want to see and some of you said please sneak some more makeup videos in there so I thought it'd be perfect to come on today and do a first impression review and demo on the new Tarte Shape Tape foundation since it is such a hot product so many of you have asked me my thoughts on it or if I ordered it um, I basically ordered one of the matte version and then one of the hydrating I am NOT on Tarte's PR list or anything like that so I wasn't able to get this product last week for you guys so I'm basically putting this up the day that I received the package. I'm still trying to get it up like in a timely manner for you guys. Um, I basically tried out the matte foundation on one half of my face and the hydrating on the other half. Leave a comment down below and see if you can tell like which half is which before we get into that part of the video. Um, so this is basically just like the big sister of the Shape Tape Concealer, which is absolutely insane. I have loved probably for like two years. I didn't know this, but one Shape Tape concealer is sold every 20 seconds. It has been the number one concealer that's been sold in Ulta for the past two years, which is crazy. It's a product that I've always loved. I'll be super upfront with you guys about Tarte because I do not care to get on their PR list or to get on their good side or anything. Like my loyalty is to you guys. I don't use any other Tarte products except this. Like their eyeshadow palettes, none of their other stuff has really like appealed to me too much. Um, but this foundation from the minute I heard that it was releasing I knew it was a product I genuinely wanted to pick up and try out and see just how it wore with my skin Especially because I heard it was supposed to be so such full coverage and that's just personally like what I prefer So each bottle does come with one fluid ounce, which is super standard for any like high-end foundation You can find this on the Tarte website or you can buy it through Ulta I can leave a link down below if you guys want to go through Ulta and you can get cash back this one here is the hydrating bottle. I'll also show you the matte one. That one is purple and this one is blue. So like I said, there's one fluid ounce in each bottle, which is pretty standard. Um, they did price it at 39 bucks, which I feel is pretty fair. I know other like high-end foundations like Fenty Beauty and Dior and stuff like that can get up in the $50, $60 range. So I'll give them a point on that on the price range. I think 39 is like pretty average. Um, I really like the Kat Von D Lock It foundation. That's super full coverage. That's something I prefer that I would spend money on and it's right around the same price. So I don't mind the price point there. Um, I checked on the website today and as of today they do offer 15 shades I believe when they first launched this foundation there was only 13 shades um, And I do want to obviously mention something here real quick like a little disclaimer I'll just be really honest with you guys. I hate that. This is like trendy to talk about now I wish I was able to get this video up sooner for you guys But like I said, I'm not like on their PR list, um, but you can clearly see the day they released the shade range I went to Twitter and posted a screenshot of it right away and just posted how it was completely unacceptable and that I personally did not think it was fair even though I'm someone who clearly does not have a much darker skin tone I would absolutely hate to be so hyped up for a product and so excited and so ready to support a brand and a company and then for them to release the shade range out of 15 shades only three of them to be somewhat darker and for me to not even be able to find my color match or to have my undertone Tarte is such a big mainstream company who is obviously making like crazy revenue and has access to the labs. I think you've definitely got to release a product and not just any product, like this was so, so, so hyped up. If you're gonna hype it up that much and you know nowadays that people are gonna be reviewing it on YouTube and so many other platforms and there's so many amazing women and men of color who do YouTube and social media who would be able to help you promote your products. Like in a smart marketing and PR way, you would definitely wanna release the product with way, way, way more shades and undertones for darker skin. So I think that in and of itself is unacceptable. Even though I do have lighter skin, I would hate to be so excited for a product or walk into a store and not be able to find my color because it's like you're just singling out a specific group of people. Like to me, it just seems totally unfair. So obviously I didn't have a problem finding my shade just because like I can't help it. I just have a lighter skin tone. That's how I was born. But I know tons of people who watch my YouTube channel and who I watch on YouTube who just have a darker complexion um, would be super upset and have been super upset because I've watched other reviews because they haven't been able to find their shade. And I know Tarte um, also mentioned they're coming out with a second release with like 10 more shades, 
But to me, it's like, did they have those shades ready at the beginning? And they're just like holding them back and gonna release them later just because they're getting all this press and all this PR right now? I don't know. I mean, it's kind of sad because what they did absolutely sucks, but yet it seems like a really good PR move because everyone is talking about this product now. Everyone's ranting about it. They're just gaining like more PR from it, if you think about it. Um, but yeah, I do think that's absolutely ridiculous. Even though I'm someone with lighter skin tone, if I ever launch any type of makeup, you better believe I'm gonna be catering to everyone just because I believe like that's just so unfair. But anywho, um, I ordered three of them. Only two of them came in the mail. I don't know what happened to the third one. I need to contact them. They only shipped me two. So we're gonna go ahead and get into a demo. I did half my face with the matte, half with the hydrating. We'll do a little check-in throughout the day. And then at the end, I'll give you guys my final thoughts and review. All right, so let's just get started. I got out of the shower and I put a little bit of my Clean and Clear moisturizer on and a tiny bit of the Maybelline Baby Skin Primer just in here and like my T-zone to help really blur the effect of like all the pores. Um, that's what I do every single day with my normal full coverage foundation routine and I just want to make sure that I'm treating this foundation exactly as I would on an everyday basis just to give you guys completely accurate results so I'm gonna do half my face with the matte foundation and the other half with the hydrating so if you guys go to purchase these on the website all the matte foundations are in purple the blue are in hydrating um, it does have the same type of wand as the concealer which I know a lot of other people have talked about in their reviews which is really nice because you can cover a big portion of your face um, supposedly with only using maybe a few strokes of this and minimal product so for the matte foundation for the purple one, I chose the color light neutral, which looks a little bit dark. I don't know if I was like hoping I'd be a little tanner by now, but um, just comes out like this on the doe foot applicator. So this is light neutral. This is a swatch right here. Um, it's a little bit more liquidy than I assumed it would be. Since they market it as such a full coverage foundation, I thought it'd be a little bit thicker, but that color match actually looks pretty good. And then for the hydrating, I got in the color fair light neutral. So I will also do a swatch of this one. Pretty identical on the color actually. So we have the matte here and this is gonna be the hydrating here. So I'm gonna do the right side of my face with the matte formula and the left side with the hydrating because I definitely wanna see if they set differently once I layer concealer and powder and everything over top. And also when like four to eight hours passes throughout the day, I'll try to do a little check-in with you guys. I wanna see if they wear differently and which formula like breaks down on my skin. If you're new to my channel, I do have dry skin overall. Um, even though I usually like to go for matte foundations, which is not the best combo for super dry skin, but I just really like full coverage personally. So I'm definitely be going for a full coverage look today. Let me just, <laughs> you know, set up the mirror. Okay, all right, let's just go in with the matte side. Again, this is in the color Light Neutral CFD1, if you're curious. Obviously, I'll have their website and everything linked down below. As you can see, I don't have any active breakouts right now, but I do have a lot of redness right here and a lot of freckles. Hopefully that will show up on camera. I'm trying to get a little closer. So, all right, color actually does look like a pretty good color match. All right, but again, it's not feeling as thick as I thought it would. Just because the Shape Tape Concealer is so thick, I thought this formula would be a little bit thicker. Yeah, it's actually, it's pretty watery actually. It's looking a lot darker in person than I think is coming off in the viewfinder, so I'm just gonna try and lower down my, oops, my um, ISO level so you can see a little bit more of an accurate picture. There we go. So that is the one side with the matte. Let me go in with the hydrating. Again, this is fair, light, neutral. Definitely feels like a little bit of a different formula. I mean, obviously because it is. This one feels a little bit more full coverage for some reason. The actual product feels a little thicker. Yeah, definitely. This one I'm pulling some like peachy undertones let me see here. This one might even be, oh wow, okay. When I actually turn to the front and compare them both, this is much lighter than this. Um, again, I hope you guys are seeing accurately with the lighting and everything. I've got like three different studio lights in front of me. This is This color is a lot more tan. This color is a lot more peachy and like much, much, much lighter. So there is actually gonna be a significant difference which obviously because they're two different shades, but sometimes when you mix everything together, like the final result, you sometimes can't even tell. Oh, and this formula feels really drying already up here. It feels really drying. Like it's drying extremely quick. All right, let me blend these in. All right, so I just brought two different stippling brushes to blend everything out. This one's from LA Colors, just a big flat stippling brush. I'll use that for the matte side. And then this is a little bit of a more dense brush from Morphe. It's called the G1. 
I also use this on an everyday basis. Um, I also use beauty blenders, like Real Technique sponges all the time, but I can't find any of them to save my life. The two that I found this morning were super dirty. So let's go ahead and blend out the matte side with the bigger brush here and just kind of see how it blends in. Oh, wow. Very hard to move the product around. So just know that they both dry really fast. You, you I should have actually probably started to work with this a lot sooner. Love this color though. I think the matte side is gonna be the one I end up liking more because this other side in person looks way too light. Might be a good formula. Maybe I just needed a darker color, but so far this one is looking like the winner side. Still feels a bit drying though. Like I'm flaking off right here and it just feels a bit like, yeah, drying, I guess. Really good color match though. Usually I'm not, it takes me a few tries to actually pick my perfect color. So I'm surprised I picked one on this side that was like really spot on. All right, so that is one full layer of the matte covered up pretty much. I mean, not too much full coverage right here. Might need another little layer, um, but it covered up all the redness and all the freckles right here. So looks pretty flawless on that side. Go ahead and switch to this brush for the hydrating side. Yeah, this side is definitely pulling a much lighter color with peach undertones and like, oh yeah, lots of pink. This side is definitely more tan and this side is just definitely a lot lighter. And I feel like my personal skin has more of like a tan and orange undertone. So I don't, I, I haven't even blended all out yet and I can tell I don't really, I'm not really gonna be vibing with this side too much. Let's see. But yeah, you definitely want to blend either formula that you choose out um, a little bit quicker than I did because it's a little bit hard to move the product around. Let's see. Oh yeah, this one is not as full coverage either. A bunch of redness is peeking through right here. Lots of wrinkles and like baggage underneath my eye here. It feels like it didn't cover anything in this area, like nothing. Both, I mean, even on this side, you can see some redness peeking through and it's definitely not a super, super full coverage layer, which I expected it to be because the concealer is so full coverage and that's what it's known for, like wedding coverage. You would think that they would make these like super extreme coverage as well. Um, but on this one, especially, I'm definitely gonna have to just add a bunch more because especially in person, it's just looking like a ton of my skin is peeking through. All right, so that's one full layer of the matte and like one and a half layers of the hydrating. I 1 million percent personally just prefer the way the matte formula feels on my face better and I think it looks a lot more full coverage. This is definitely just not my right color and like up here really close, it's super flaky and it just feels really drying for whatever reason. Obviously, I'm gonna try out the Shape Tape Concealer on top and see how it layers. Obviously, it's within like the same fa product family so you would think they would invent the foundation to work super well with the concealer, of course. I'm just gonna do my regular under eye jam. Um, usually I do use a shade of concealer that's a bit more orange. This one it does have a little bit more pink undertone. It's called Fair Beige, but this is the only one I have at the moment. So we'll just see kind of how this layers on. I'll blend this out and then I'm gonna put a setting powder over the concealer from NYX and just kind of let that bake there a little bit. I wanna see how it does with the wrinkles underneath my eyes and if it leaves like any flakes or if it just leaves a completely flawless finish under the eyes. Again, it doesn't feel extremely full coverage under here, especially in person. I can see like little fine lines. So it's not, again, just as full coverage as I thought it would be. Um, but it's, the concealer is sitting on top of it fine. I'm just gonna put some of the NYX HD Finishing Banana Powder over top. And then we're actually just gonna let this bake here for probably like a good, like 15 minutes. I like to let it sit a really long time. All right, so it looks fine for now. I'll just go with the matte finishing powder in color 220. I'm using a huge brush from Inglot. I'm gonna tap some of that off and just dust over the foundation. I can definitely see a visible color change on how pink this side is and how like tan and olivey this right side is. So again, I'm hoping that comes off on camera, but um, this side is looking really good. I will definitely continue to use the matte foundation um, even after this video because it, it looks really good and it feels really nice. This side for some reason still just feels pretty thin And again, it's just kind of accentuating like lines, but they both feel Like the powder doesn't feel too heavy over both sides. So that's good. My forehead looks a lot tanner than right here It seems like I have like no coverage here But yeah, that's pretty much it for powder I'm just gonna let you guys watch me like speed through the rest of my face and put on my lashes and then I'll be right back
All right, that's pretty much it for the makeup. Um, everything is setting on top of the foundation pretty nicely. It doesn't feel too heavy or too cakey. I do definitely still have some fine lines under my eyes and in this whole area right here, I was hoping it would be a bit more full coverage. But other than that, it does look pretty nice in person. I'm just going to blow dry my hair and straighten it and put on some lashes and then I'll be right back. All right, so lashes are on, full face is done. Um, overall thoughts of just getting everything on. Um, nothing feels super heavy or super cakey. In person, it does look really good. It looks really full coverage. Um, again, I think I definitely still prefer the matte side. There is a little bit of a visible difference in person on the color for the hydrating versus the matte side, but everything feels fine. Um, yeah, I don't really assume it should break up like too much. I'm gonna wait maybe three to four hours and then come give you guys, let you know how it's looking and if it's breaking up. Um, I do wanna get this video up tonight, so I'm not gonna do like a full like eight hour wear test, um, but let me turn off the camera now, import this footage, kind of start getting this video edited and go about the rest of my afternoon and I'll come do another check-in before we end the video. All right, so it's been a few hours. I'm back from my final um, later on in the day check-in for you guys just to show you how the foundation is actually looking. Nothing looks too oily or has like really broken up very much at all I'm trying to give you guys a little better the lighting is just horrible right now because it's super dark outside and I usually rely pretty heavily on natural daylight so I'm just trying to give you guys like a complete accurate final like end of the day review um, it does look pretty good again I am just you know I was just unhappy unimpressed and sad and just like overall upset about the whole shade range situation as for the formula and the actual product itself um, I won't lie it looks really good Again, sorry, I have like a bunch of studio lights in front of me right now, and then I just have my like vanity light here. Um, but yeah, I mean, it looks really good, I can't lie. The matte side, like I said, I do like more. I will continue to use up the whole bottle because I purchased it, and I wanna get some use out of it, and I really do like how it feels. Nothing feels super cakey or heavy. Um, I just like overall, like the full coverage, like final glam that I ended up with. So just wanted to come back in and check in with you guys. Let me know if you've tried this foundation, what you think about the shade range, what you think about Tarte in general as a brand. Leave it in the comments Below. I'm always open for discussion and I do read every comment. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so so much for watching I'd love to have you subscribe and also just be a part of my social media as well um, And definitely check out some other videos I have on my page because I have so much more than makeup and I'd love to just share my life with you guys I appreciate you taking time to watch. I love you and I'm gonna see you in the next one